podcast. Uh, welcome back to this new episode. And today I have my good friend Andrew with me. So if you haven't yet, make sure you go back to watch our previous episode where we talked about setting up your business legally and choosing the right uh, business model for that. So, Andrew, how are you today? Yeah, not bad. All good. How are you doing, Leo? All good. Uh, that intro was correct, right? That was what we talked about. Yes, yeah, that's correct. Okay. <laughs> awesome. So, if you are new to to watching this podcast, or you've come up, you, you know, you're watching this episode for the first time, uh, Andrew is based in the UK, right? So he is a licensed accountant, um, and he's going to be joining us on a regular basis talking about different areas of uh, not only just not only taxes but also the accounting side which is the legal side and I feel this is something that coaches definitely need a lot of advice and and help on so Andrew today our topic is how to set up your business uh, banking for sports coaches and trainers Okay, so so tell us a little bit about this topic before we get into the conversation. Yeah, so usually um, the first step, as we spoke in the previous podcast, is um, deciding what business structure you're going to choose. And, and what naturally comes from that is, okay, what is the business bank account you're going to set up after? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the natural flow of it. And then there's going to be the accounting software side but that's we're going to save that for another another podcast but yeah as i said after choosing your business structure it's then choosing your um the, the right business bank account for your for your sports coaching business okay awesome so obviously out there at the moment there's a lot of options right in terms of banks like there's new banks popping up uh on a monthly basis so Give give uh, the business owners watching a little bit of advice in what is the best way to find a business banking account or or selecting the right bank for your business. What what are a couple of tips that you can recommend? Yeah, so I would say um, definitely do the research. Do, doing the research is 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 the best way because essentially when you choose whatever business bank account. You, you're going to go for it you're going to stay with it pretty much for the longevity of the business mm -hmm. of course you can switch and I know I've had clients that do switch uh, bank accounts but but the the further along your business journey you are the harder it is to do because you've got to do direct debits you've got to contact your suppliers and things like that so definitely researching it uh, good to know if there's any banking fees what are the features of the, the banking so for example some bank accounts offer free accounting software and if it's right for your sports coaching business that could actually be quite cost effective as well another thing as well is is customer support what's the customer support like when you're choosing your your bank account you want to have uh, quite quick turnaround for that the bank banking staff to offer any solutions to any queries that you have. Other things as well is depending on the nature of your business, you might want to, you might be taking payments abroad and, or you're making payments to certain suppliers abroad as well. Uh, that's where having good foreign exchange fees comes in. And that might be opening another separate bank account. So obviously there's a lot to think about, but good planning is, uh, is key here. Love that. So I'm going to put myself in a position where I'm a coach starting up, right? I'm in this process of selecting a bank, right? What what What's the first step? What, what do I need to do, right? I know it sounds very, very basic, right? Obviously, get in contact with a bank, but what, talk to us a little bit about the process. Yeah, of course. Before, before we go on to that earlier, first of all, I want to just explain the importance of having a business bank account because i think that's that's something that we we've got to touch on um beforehand and it is if you have a limited company it's a must to have a company bank account anyway now if you're a sole trader 
sole proprietor. A lot I see a lot of new uh, businesses. They mix the personal and their business banking, and that's that's not ideal. That's not ideal for many reasons. First of all, if you are doing the bookkeeping yourself, you're doing your books, you're going to be going through a lot more transactions. If you're assigning an accountant or a bookkeeper to do it, they're more likely to charge you uh, higher fees because there's just more transactions to sift through, even though some of them are personal. Another reason as well is if HMRC, for whatever reason, open an inquiry and they want to see your bank statements, if your business is running through your personal bank account, sometimes it can actually be hard to justify certain items of expenditure because it may seem as personal related yeah. so that's another reason as well um and yeah and as i said for, for both if you're a limited company or you're a, a sole trader as well receiving funding whether it be lending um or if you want to sell your business in the future having a clean bank account in terms of not having personal transactions going through it is definitely a lot more favorable for you know the buyer or the lender. Um, so so yeah. Okay, now going into your next part is what's the process? So certain banks have a uh, different kind of criteria, and it really depends on the bank itself. Now, some banks may, especially if you're a new business, certain banks may want to ask for certain evidence that you've started your business or you're about to start your business. And that could be, for example, in the sports sports coaching world, your level two could be, or it could just be something like buying equipment. They want to see some sort of evidence that you're actually starting your business. That's uh, especially for new businesses. Um, another thing as well is definitely check out, if you are working with an accountant, if they are partnered up with certain banks, that could speed up the process and your accountant could actually give you a bit more information on why you may not have passed certain steps in applying for that business bank account and how to um, rectify that as well. So it's always good there. And also they can also give you potential um, discounts on bank fees and things like that. But I would say if you're a new business, try and steer away from banks that are charging any sort of fees. Um, because as you said, there's so many banks out there, uh, the competi competition is so uh, is strife there. So the banks, they're just uh, offering free banking, which obviously is good for everyone. Mm -hmm. Good good piece of advice there. For those coaches that are based more in, in the US or North America, uh, when you said HMRC, that is our equivalent to the IRS. All right. right. Yeah. Just want to be so so there's no confusion there. Um, now, something I also I, I've also got another question. Right. So we've got touching on the selection of banks out there. Right. Now, what's the difference between choosing or if there is any choosing like a, a, a popular high street bank or going with an online bank? So it could be a, a company such as Revolut or Starlin one of those that doesn't that aren't your your normal high street bank are there any differences with choosing them yeah that's a good question so i would say there are some differences what you would experience usually is with a high street banks they usually charge fees uh monthly fees or transactional fees it's not to say that um online banks e money institutions as they're also called as well they uh, they sometimes do that as well. So it, as I said, it is just looking into what ones charge. Mu uh, pretty much all high street banks are FSCS protected, which means um, up to eighty five thousand pounds of your money is protected if if you know the banks um, do um, basically you know collapse, for example. So, but it's not to say actually a lot of e money. Bank. So, for example, Metal, which is partnered with NatWest, their FSC is protected now. Starling is, you know, and some other banks are ring fenced. So that means 
they are approved by the FCA, uh, but they are ring fenced by other banks as well. So there is some sort of level of protection. Of course, I'm not a banker, <laughs> so but there there are some some differences there. Now, as I said, there are some similarities. You can get good custom support from either either one of them. It's good to just do some research in terms of reviews of business banking. Um, but but yeah, that that's kind of it in a nutshell. Okay, nice. So if there's a, a coach out there that's watching, they currently have a business bank account and they're realizing, right, this bank is charging me too, too, too high fees. Uh, I want to go to someone else, right? Is that an easy process to change bank or what, what are a few things that they, they should know about? Yeah, so nowadays it's just so much, it's so much easier to switch banks. Yeah. And setting up a new bank account is quite easy. You can, a lot of banks, even high street banks, you can just uh, set it up from your phone. You know, take take the picture, um, upload your ID, and you can open up a new bank account within minutes, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so it's not that hard to switch. The only thing I would say is that if you're more of the established business, you're getting, you're having a lot of payments coming in and out of of your of your bank business bank account it can be tricky it's just more time consuming because then you've got to switch everything over yeah it if some banks are part of the um the switch guarantee then that that process can be made um a lot easier as well mm -hmm. okay good so tell us a reason why a, a coach or just a business owner in general wouldn't want to set up a business banking account what are, why they wouldn't why they wouldn't because i know i've spoken to a lot of coaches who are doing everything into their personal account right and you see i give them advice i say to them right you need to find an accountant that can help you to set this up and i feel like sometimes a lot of coaches are like i can't be bothered yeah, because it's too much effort. I got to look for the bank. I got to do my research, and um, so they'd rather keep everything in a personal personal account, right? So, why wouldn't someone do it? Yeah, so I, I mean, probably from a lot of the reasons that you've provided now is is it could just be laziness, and it could be uh, cost. Could be the cost involved as well, but it's something to remember for you know, sports coaches and, and other business owners when starting out the business is you want to, first of all, setting up your, as we said in the previous po po podcast, having a good foundation in terms of setting up your business structure, setting up your bank account. It's all, it does lay the foundation to a successful sports coaching business mm -hmm. and having a an accountant or a bookkeeper to, to talk you through what other businesses have gone through and maybe the troubles that they've had down the line, for example, and going back to the thing, you know, funding or lending that they could come across those issues. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, if you want to build a successful sports coaching business, you've got to have these, um, these building blocks in place and it will help you in the future as well. It will help you in the future Another thing to mention as well is having different pots for, for example, your corporation tax or your income tax, have another pot for equipment, purchasing your equipment. Mm -hmm. That gives you a lot better cash flow mm -hmm. um, down the line. So, but if you don't have a, you know, if you're mixing personal and business to start off with, it's going to be very hard to, to do those extra things. And uh, it will it, it could potentially slow the growth of your business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. By pot, what do you mean by pot? For those yeah, that may, so may not understand. Pot. So having different money pots, for example. So a lot of banks now offer the, as I said, one of the things that is good when researching bank accounts is can you create separate money pots? And that's really, really good for planning. So tax planning, if you're buying, as I said, equipment, or, or if you want to pay yourself, and if there's a number of partners or directors in your business, 
having separate pots can be really, really good for, for, for cash flow. Another way of doing it is just setting up a number of different bank accounts as well within that, which can also be done. But yeah, having different pots, that just helps business owners allocate money and it, it definitely helps with cash flow and uh, planning for the future. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Now, say you're a busy coach, right? You, I don't know, maybe you're doing it part-time. So you've got a full-time job, you're doing it kind of on the side, but you're looking to grow and scale, but you haven't got that time to sit down, to do your research on different banks. Um, what's a piece of advice? Could you, can an accountant do that for you uh, to save you time? Is that an option for coaches who are really busy? Yeah, so essentially there's no there's no shortcut. However, to cut down on the time spending to research, of course, speak to an accountant who does understand the current best bank accounts, business best bank accounts, and also who work with sports coaches as well. Mm -hmm. That would help. And also if they're partnered up with certain banks, they could help extradite that process. So for example, they would be able to send a link to that business coach, um, sports coach, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, or business coach, any, mm -hmm. any, any business. And they could then apply online and that would help the accountant track the application process to make sure everything runs smoothly. Okay. Fantastic. All right, Andrew. Well, thanks again for, for jumping on here, sharing your, your knowledge with us. Um, as we're going to do on all the videos below in the description, we're going to put a number of ways uh, to get in contact. So thanks again and look forward to our next chat coming up. No problem. Thanks for having me.